that he loved, who basically checked off all the boxes. What are the, when you were growing up, or even still, as you look back, what are the songwriters where you look and you go, check, 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 yeah, they've got it all. They, the people who inspired you, who were they? Well, then when I was uh, in early days, but but even now, um, there's not a lot, but but certainly David Gates from Bread would be, to me, one of the great writers of all time. Um, his song, well, there's many of them, but but um, everything I own, um, like about his father. I mean, what a, what a tribute, but what a song! And it's, you feel it, and you feel it. Well, everyone's got a father, and whether whether it's um, a great relationship or or a damaged relationship, it still gets you. and And that song cuts like a knife, and and it's a unique um, approach to songwriting in that the subject is very unique. You know that that, and and it's I know that it's written about his father, but it could be about anyone. It could be about a brother. It could be about um, a, a lover or a wife or a husband, but but his amazing falsetto voice, of course, because that was my role in Little River Band, that was a great inspiration for me. Uh, so his songwriting, um, but Cole Porter was was always the number one. Um, lyric wise, Johnny Mercer, um, words and music of Irving Berlin. The American Songbook, the, the the Gershwins, like all of the people that are just legendary and that will live forever in the songwriting world, they were uh, Gus Khan, who was earlier, but like it had to be you. I mean, what an incredible song. I mean, amazing songwriting from these people. Uh, it, it, like Al Jolson was recording a lot of those songs. But but I was very familiar with with all of that. I mean, uh, Rogers and Hammerstein. Wow. I mean, I mean, Rogers and Hammerstein are the benchmark for my musical. If if I can't produce a musical as good as what they've done, I don't want to do it. And so when I was a songwriter, I wanted to write a song as good as Night and Day. And I think I got there maybe with reminiscing in a different way. It's you got Night and Day, you got reminiscing. They're both. I think. 10 out of 10 as a composition. And um, the Rodgers and Hammerstein musicals are the benchmark. And so when I'm now uh, fired up about writing a musical or a film, um, I've got to set my standard to say, well, I'm shooting for Sound of Music. I'm shooting for Carousel or King and I. It's got to be that good but it'll be a, a musical on my life with a score that every song will be iconic in the score as it was in Rodgers and Hammerstein. I don't want to do an Andrew Lloyd Webber type musical. It's got one or two songs, maybe if you're lucky. Uh, it's not about, um, it's about having every song to get to you. That's what it needs to be. If there's a song in, in my, my musical, then it's got to be, Heart wrenching. It's got to be exciting. It's got to rock. It's got to do whatever it needs to do. Uh, and I fortunately have got the songs to do this because we've got a very, I've got a very wide palette of songs that I can write from jazz through to rock. So I know we've got the ingredients, and I know where my standards for this show sit. Um, and all I need is the money. So I, I need somebody to really understand that there is a wonderful show film story here but they we I need an angel investor to to want to really bring this into the world there's a great story about forever blue that I if you want to I could share that of course. um it was recorded in 1980 late 85 on our last album the no rains album and a, a friend of mine, a Stephen Foster, who was a songwriter um, with um, that I'd known from the 70s, and Stephen passed away a, couple, a few years ago, but he wrote the song um, 12 years earlier, and it was called Sometimes I Wish I Was a Sailor. He had two verses, 
Uh, and he played me the song, and I thought, this, this is fantastic. He said, would you like to have a, have a shot at writing a chorus for it? He said, I've tried with two other songwriters and they haven't been able to write um, a chorus. So I said, well, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I, I don't know, but we'll see what happens. So, so he'd had this song for 12 years. And so then in 1985, we were recording the No Rains album and I, he, I had these two verses. And then I had it for about three months and I was unable to come up with a chorus. And so one night I actually said a prayer, send me the chorus. And I woke up next morning, John, and this chorus, which is currently in the song, was there. And a great line in it, which which, which, I, which blew me away because I didn't write it, but it, it, it came through, was um, um, the chorus is, sometimes I close my eyes and drift away. I can't forget the things I didn't say. I thought, what a line. That's what a great line. What a great line. It's not been said before in a song that I know of. Mm-hmm. It, it is a great song because that's this is the regret. And, and then, of course, um, the title of Being Forever Blue, that obviously came from me because there's a part, there's a, there's a sadness in me that is forever blue. Even though I'm a really optimistic and happy guy, there's a sadness in me that, that song um, came from there and 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 on 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 high as well. So anyway, we recorded Forever Blue, and 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 then the No Rains album, which was our last album for Capital, came out, and of course it it, it sank like a stone. There was no interest in it. The band was finished as far as Capital was concerned, and and that just sat there. So that's 1985. So then ten years later. A DJ in Holland, in the Netherlands, starts playing Forever Blue every night in his radio show, every night. And th- we'd been broken up for years. And then um, suddenly it people are ringing up about this song and then, then they start buying it. And it just, I think it, I don't know where it went to, but it was a massive hit because he just started playing it. Now, my friend Stephen Foster, who was, he, he'd he never written a hit in his life, and this was a co-write between us. He, uh, in, in Australia, uh, like we, we've got, um, as song- songwriters, we used to get an annual check from APRA, which is like BMI in, in, in uh, they, they collect royalties for radio airplay, and then we used to get an annual payment. And Stephen, throughout his life, would go out, to the mail, it used to be in January, I think, and he would get maybe $20 or $30 for his payment for the year for all the songs that was getting played. So in 19, well, that, well he goes out in, in uh, it was 22 years since he'd written that, uh, sometimes I wish it was a sailor, he goes out and there's a check for $50,000 in the mail. He, he nearly died. I mean, really. Oh, my God, that's beautiful. Based on all of the airplay coming out of the Netherlands on that song. <laughs> what a beautiful so, moment, eh? It, that, it just gives me a thrill because he was such a dear soul uh, and, and, and an amazing writer in his own way, but he'd never written any hits. And I think there's a lot of writers that the thing that made that song was the awesome chorus that, that was given to me. And, and then changing the title. But then John Farnham's performance, the the band's harmonies, I mean, it's in my top five Little River Band songs of all time, and now it's on Ultimate Hits Forever. This is our now our definitive r- record, and it is such a great, great song. And, boy, it could easily be in a movie, and maybe now with it being having a bit more focus, maybe it can <laughs> Maybe it can be. He's such an interesting chap. I love talking to Graham Goble. Little did I know that in the late 70s, when I was buying their albums, I would get a chance to talk to B. Bertles, Graham Goble, and Glenn Shorick about those great songs that helped me grow up. 
I'm sure they influenced you as well. We'll have more from Graham Goble in the next few days. Remember, join our Patreon, get early access to videos and bonus material. The link's in the description. If you want to help the channel make a donation, there's links there too as well. But share our videos, comment on them, subscribe to our channel. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take care of yourself.